CSM is giving you free courses. That's right, free courses each month just for being part of the NASM family. Learn about everything ranging from nutrition to strength, weight loss to stress relief, and everything in between. Click the link in the bio for information and to claim your free course before they're gone. You are listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie, the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and I want to talk a little bit today about physical activity and COVID-19. I know, I know we're trying to turn the corner on this. I'm tired of talking about this, but we haven't really talked about COVID-19. And here's what I like about the conversation today is we're going to talk about physical activity. We're going to talk about exercise and how we see in the research that it's become protectant against COVID-19 and the bug that causes COVID-19, that SARS-CoV-2. So the SARS-CoV-2 is the virus, COVID-19 is the sickness. So we're going to talk about it. And, and I know that we're, we're frustrated during this time. One of the biggest complaints that I got from my gym owner friends is that, that it was we were not considered to be essential but fast food was, right? So you could open up a fast food restaurant and that's essential, but but fitness facilities were not considered essential. And I get it. I get it. As a gym owner, I get it. And the episode is not to judge one way or the other about the shutdown or about the responses to an awful pandemic. Rather, the point we're trying to do is we want to point out the dangers of the lack of physical activity during the COVID-19 pandemic, and then maybe let's discuss some of the importance of prioritizing physical activity, because it's been a big deal. It's been a big deal. As we all know, sedentary behaviors have significantly increased during the lockdown, and yes, Let's be honest, there's a small percentage who have taken time and advantage of the time to increase their physical activity and to focus on taking care of themselves more. But let's talk about exercise. Let's talk about physical activity. And let's discuss what this means for, how about the more frail of populations that are out there? And I speak to this one directly because my my wife's mother is in an assisted living home. And that's tough. It's tough because she's isolated. No family visits during the time. They were window visits. We can go outside. I remember going outside of her window and calling her. And she would answer the phone. She'd stand in the window. But the problem is that the big AC unit was right outside of her window for the entire place. So even talking on the phone, we had this <laughs> AC unit going on. We could barely hear her. We see her. And it's hard enough to get the grandkids to talk to the grandmother on the phone. And then they see her and they're like, I don't, I don't know. This is strange. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to engage. Like this. It's tough. It's tough times. No physical activity, limited physical activity. Exercise in older people, we know it positively affects and prevents frailty, sarcopenia, uh, risk of falls, self-esteem, cognitive impairment, and decline. It can positively affect all of those things. And according to Jimenez Pavon, and a group of researchers in 2020, they talked about exercise has become especially essential for older people during quarantine because to maintain physiological function and reserve of most of the organ systems that could contribute to the fight against mental and physical consequences of the severity of COVID-19. Man, that's a huge statement. Amar et al. 2020 noted that not only is physical activity taking a concerning direction, but so is the pandemic diet. And it started that the isolation is a public health concern. The only good news is that this study found that, that there was a decrease in binge drinking alcohol. All right, that, there's, a, there's a positive. 
that has come from some of the isolation that has taken place, but the negatives are things that we're concerned with. And these are things that we can control. And as fitness professionals, you know, we don't, we're encouraging physical activity and we can address physical activity, not necessarily working out. Being more active throughout the day. How can we do that? And how can we prioritize it? Check this out. This would be front page news if it were uh, a prescription medication or an over-the-counter medication in a fight against COVID-19. It'd be front page news. Here's a statement is an integrative literature review by De Silva and his colleagues in 2021, noting that physical activity provided pro and anti-inflammatory cytokine responses. It increased lymphocyte circulation and cell recruitment that led to lower incidences, limited symptoms, and reduced mortality from SARS-CoV-2 infections and the COVID-19 illness. Are you kidding me? Kimmy, if they found that that was a pill form, Big Farm would be like, what? The PR on blast, going to be in every newspaper. But what do we see when it's physical activity? We say, oh, yeah, yeah, maybe you should do some, be more physical activity. It's probably good for you. We've got, we've got the science, man. We keep talking about the science. We got the science. We got peer-reviewed content. Showing over and over, physical activity, supportive in the fight against SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19. Front page news? No. No, not front page news. Not news. Why? Yeah, I don't know. Gerson and his colleagues, 2021, reported that participants who experienced the greatest decline in um, physical activity, moderate to vigorous physical activity, reported relatively greater psychological distress and lower life satisfaction. People who are exercising less, experiencing declines in physical activity are having greater psychological distress and lower life satisfaction. I posted recently on my social media page, it was last week, a study that shows that there is a reciprocal relationship between physical activity and happiness. This is a great study by Anne et al. in 2020. It said regardless of age. So we looked at young people, looked at adult, we looked at older age and elderly populations, and it was clear that the more physically active people are, the happier they are. So all your crazy friends who can't stop talking about their high intensity workout or the class that I went to or the thing I'm involved in and they won't shut up about it. You know why? They can't help it because there's an association between happiness and increased physical activity. They're happy for real, and there's a reason. Happier people tend to be more physically active, but the study showed a reciprocal relationship too, that if you're more physically active, you tend to be happier, but also happier people tend to be more physically active. You talk about upward spirals. This is good stuff. Upward spirals. Barbara Fredrickson, upward spirals, broadening and building. And the cool thing about this concept of upward spirals is that as you get better at anything, not just physical activity, according to Fredrickson's research, but she talks about anything that you do and get better at and start to build confidence in, and start to develop mastery and getting some autonomy. We get into some self-determination theory here. You become more competent. You relate it to other people. You start doing that. It starts to affect you in other aspects of your life. Not just, not, not just pickleball. Not just bocce ball. Or shuffleboard. Fitness in general. 
not just arts and crafts. You get better at arts and crafts and you start applying a focus in your life, a feeling of purpose that goes outside of that purpose. It sends you into a serious and beautiful upward spiral. All right. Physical activity, happier people, physical activity, physical activity, happier people. Knowing this, we have to encourage people to be more physically active, active from home. Because sometimes at many places still, gyms are still closed. And I'm a huge fan, I'm a huge fan of the direct-to-consumer fitness apps that are being put out there, the programming that trainers have been able to do, training people virtually. And so many NASM trainers have reported uh, increasing their virtual training and found huge benefits for their business, but their clients, but their clients getting huge benefits by being able to still be active while they're at home. The virtual training course that NASM has provided help to trainers all over the world to help people connect with fitness and physical activity from home during this time. I think it's fantastic. And here's the thing. I think the trend is going to continue. The trend will continue. And people will be coming back to gyms. People will be coming back to classes. People will go back to the boutique studios and the big com community centers. But the point of this whole talk is that physical activity should never be sidelined. Exercise is nature's medicine. Exercise is nature's medicine medicine. Write it down, make a note, post about it, throw some memes up. Y'all, exercise is nature's medicine and daily doses are imperative. Exercise is nature's medicine. Daily doses are imperative. Physical activity, maybe. Let's refer, maybe refer physical activity is nature's medicine. Why? Because you don't necessarily have to put together an exercise routine in order to get the benefits from physical activity, which is just being around and moving around and doing more, sitting less throughout the day to be more physically active. It's dose dependent. Are you getting the doses, Jen? We talked about it in another episode that's being launched this week. The guidelines for physical activity. If you haven't listened to that, make sure that you listen to that episode. What are the guidelines for physical activity? And you know what they do? They've proven over and over again to help boost immunity. This all started because I was working on a, a writing project. I was working on a writing project to show a correlation between increased physical activity and bolstering the immune system. You imagine what I found there? Which led me into so much research that has gone on regarding physical activity and COVID-19 and fighting the SARS-CoV-2. Physical activity and helping with cardiovascular prevention, uh, disease prevention, cardiovascular rehab, decreasing the incidences of multiple types of cancer, um, uh, certainly type two diabetes. I mean, the pulmonary dysfunction and physical activity, I'd help to increase that. Physical activity, helping to minimize, decrease, ameliorate, and help prevent every single leading cause of death in the United States for a non-communicable disease. And then in the process, I find communicable diseases of COVID-19. And guess what? Physical activity helps with that too. So help us fight sedentary inertia. Fight sedentary inertia. An object at rest seems to be at rest unless acted on by an outside force. Be the outside force to your clients. Be the outside force. Help 
fight sedentary inertia, help to get people moving, help to inspire daily activity beyond the training session, not just workouts, not just exercise, but being more regularly active throughout the day. And remember that exercise is nature's medicine and we are its pushers. <laughs> so let's get out there and make change where we can make change. And if we can't make change, let's influence it in whatever way that we can. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to this. Um, if you like the episode, please share it with people that you believe need to hear it. Subscribe to it. Give us a five-star review. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Rick Ritchie. You can reach out to me directly, mostly on Instagram, dr.rickritchie, or you can email me, rick.ritchie at nasm.org. Thank you so much. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.